Last night was UFC London, and today we're going to be going over the card that was UFC London. It was alright of a fight night. We've had better cards in London. I still think the one we had in March of last year was way better. But there was a lot of surprises on this card. A lot of important facts that we're going to talk about. And first, we're just going to skim through the prelims. Starting off with Jafel Filo versus Daniel Barez. This is a very, very good fight to start the card. Um, Daniel Barez was really hurting Filo with those body shots. Nearly dropped him, a I mean, he did drop him a couple of times, and there were times when Filo nearly got, like, disqualified because he just wouldn't stand up. Eventually, it was a huge comeback. Filo managed to take down Barez and then get a submission in the first round. Very, very impressive. And, uh, yeah, that was a great way to start the card. Then we had Sean Bannon versus Bruno, Bruno Brazil. Um, Bannon had a lot of hype coming in, I believe he was like 6-0, and oh. um, unfortunately though, it just looked like a sparring match, there, there wasn't much action, it just looked like a sparring match and Bruno Brazil took the win, as she deserved to, but um, yeah, fair play. Then we move on to Chris Duncan versus Yanal, uh, this is going to be really interesting, obviously Yanal coming off a devastating KO over Sam Patterson, and Chris Duncan was in quite a boring fight of his last fight, I actually thought Yanal was going to win this, but... For some reason, I think he injured his arm at the beginning of the fight. From what I saw, Duncan landed a, a body or a kick to his arm, which damaged his arm or something, and Yanal just didn't look normal. But Chris Duncan dominated the fight, 10 8 in, I think, the third round. Very solid performance by Chris Duncan, and I'm excited to see what he does next. Then we move on. This fight I did not watch. It was incredibly boring. Then we move on. Mahmoud Muradov versus Brian Barberena. I still don't really understand why Brian Barberena has decided to move to middleweight. It was a, it was a really weird choice. I mean, he was already quite fat for for welterweight. Why you? It just seems like he's given himself more of a disadvantage. But he got dominated in this fight. This wasn't a great fight. There was a lot of head butts, eye pokes. The at one point they simultaneously head butted each other. It was basically just Muradov ragdolling Barberena everywhere. Barbarena needs to sort out his career, and I'm not sure how long he's got left, but he really does need to sort it out if he wants to stay in this uh, UFC. Let me move on. Heavyweight Mick Parkin debuts against Jamal Poggs. A very good performance by Mick Parkin. It was quite a boring fight. There wasn't much action. Again, it just looked like a spa. Mick Parkin damaged him with those leg kicks, though, I will admit. Those leg kicks from Mick Parkin was insane. I know he trains with Tom Aspinall. Uh, Poggs started off strong, but Parkin and those leg kicks... Parkin definitely won that fight. Second round and third round, he dominated. Um, yeah, well, fair play to Big Parkin. Then we move on. Mark Jacquezzi versus Joel Alvarez. This was a bit of a weird finish because Jacquezzi was actually doing all right. You know, he, he had two of the takedowns and he didn't he didn't seem like he was doing too bad on the feet until eventually, I think it was a head clash and then the ref just didn't wave off the head clash and then Joel Alvarez was able to find a submission on him. So a bit unfair for Jacquezzi, but it is what it is. Then we had, was this the main card? No. Then we had the final fight on the prelims, I think. Danny Roberts versus Johnny Parsons. This was a very, very good fight. Very interesting performance of the night. Um, Johnny Parsons, I think, finished him. It was like a brawl in this fight. They were just going back and forth, back and forth. But yeah, very, very interesting fight. Fair play to Johnny Parsons. This was the perform. This got one of the performances of the night. And fair play. It was. It was one of the best fights on the prelims, if not the best fight on the prelim. Um, it was just a scrap. Then we move on to the main card. Oh no, this was still prelims. Davy Grant versus Daniel Marcos. Um, I feel like Davy Grant got robbed. Rob, uh, rob, I feel like he got robbed here. It was an all right fight. It was just kind of a striking matchup between them both. But when you look at these significant strikes, I mean, Davy Grant got seventy to forty nine, but he still lost the fight. I really do think Davy Grant got robbed here. Daniel Marcos probably shouldn't have got this win, but. I don't know. It just seems weird. David Grant, in my opinion, should have won this fight. He landed the better strikes. Landed more strikes. I think he, he did have a very bloody face, but I don't think that was due to Daniel Mar Well, it was due to Daniel Marcos, but I think he had nose issues coming into the fight anyway, so yeah, that was unfortunate. Then we move on. Main card. Lerone Murphy. Oh, I don't want to click on him. Lerone Murphy versus Josh Coulibau. This was an interesting fight. Um... On the feet, definitely had to give it to Lerone Murphy for the first round. It was a bit of back and forth on the feet. Both of them kind of got rocked, rocked a couple times. But in that second and third round, Lerone Murphy definitely picked up the pace. Um, wrestled Josh Coulibau, nearly submitted him a few times. But he reminds me of Leon Edwards, just does Lerone Murphy. He reminds me of like a featherweight Leon Edwards. Um, 
Yeah, Leroy Murphy just dominated him on the floor, took him down, found submissions. A very, very good wrestler is Leroy Murphy. Still undefeated. I think he's 15 and 0 now, or 16 and 0. Yeah, Leroy Murphy dominated Josh Cooley bow. Um, I'd love to see Leroy Murphy fight someone in the space of top top 10 to top 15 ranked. I think it's time he gets a ranked opponent, but yeah, I think Leroy Murphy can go far in the featherweight division. Great, very balanced fighter, can strike with you and can grapple with you. Very impressive. Then we move on. Jai Herbert versus... Why is he doing this? Jai Herbert versus Fares Ziam. This was quite a bad fight. I did not realise that Jai Herbert is 35 years old. He's 35. When I saw Jai Herbert, I thought he was like a young Leon Edwards. I thought he was like 25. The guy's 35 years old. The same age as Paul Craig, I think. Yeah. Jai Herbert, very old. Um, and it was a bit of a boring fight. It was basically nothing on the feet, just leg kicks, and then clinching the entire fight. It wasn't a fun fight at all. But... It was really hard to judge, but I'm, again, I'm going to have to give it to Ziam. He did the better in this fight, Jai Herbert. He's really weird. The guy rocked Ilya Taporia and then got knocked out by him. The guy won his last fight and then lost a point, so it ended up being a draw. And then he fights for a Ziam, and then it's just a really weird game plan. I don't understand the game plan that Jai Herbert was going for, but... Yeah, it was just a clinching battle, basically. It looked like a spa. Jai Herbert, I think he's like what three and two in the UFC, or he might be two, two and one. I don't know what what, what his record is, but yeah, man, this wasn't a fun fight to watch. It was actually quite boring, quite disappointing, but it is what it is. The card itself had a lot of boring fights. I expected it to be a lot better performing, especially since the tickets were like two hundred, three hundred pounds. But Jai Herbert, he did what he could, but just wasn't enough. Farah um, got the win. Then we move on. This is a very good fight. Paul Craig versus Andre Muniz. This is Paul Craig's middleweight debut, and he looks way better now. His striking looked cleaner. His grappling was very good. Andre Muniz was supposed to be this, you know, scary grappler. I predicted Paul Craig to get a submission in the first round, um, and he got it in the second round, I think, or it might have been ground and pound actually. I think he got ground and pound in the second round. So um, yeah, Paul Craig did very good in this fight. I think he beat Andre Muniz on the feet. Um, it could have gone 10 down to with them in the first round but that second round Craig took him down found a submission and Andre Muniz because he's a grappler escaped it and Paul Craig just fired down ground and pound until eventually he got stopped Paul Craig could actually go far in the middleweight division I mean he's beating people like Ankalai of Krylov and Hill if he's beating Andre Muniz I think he could actually go far I feel like with Paul Craig it's kind of your roll of dice you can't really use logic to predict Paul Craig's fights. It's like you roll a dice or you, you flip a coin, and that's how that's how his fights that's how his fights get picked. Like you can't use logic with him. But it was a very impressive performance. I want to see him fight um, another ranked opponent at middleweight. Um, yeah, this would be very impressive, Paul Craig. Maybe we see him face maybe Abus or something. But Paul Craig, solid performance. Andre Muniz didn't go his way. Looked like he didn't want to be there. But finally, we got a finish by Paul Craig. Then we move on. Nathaniel Wood versus Andre Philly. This was another really, really good fight. Um, Nathaniel Wood faced adversity in that first round. I think he, it was a slip or he got dropped pretty early in that first round. Um, but he managed to pick up the pace and get, you know, he was landing big shots on Andre Philly for the rest of that round. Philly was kind of toting him. I'd have to give the first round 10 9 to Nathaniel Wood. Second round was definitely, I think that was Nathaniel Wood's round again. He dropped Andre Philly, nearly finished him, but Andre Philly just about survived. Um, but that might have been a 10 9, 10 8 round to Nathaniel Wood. He's, he's definitely improved as Nathaniel Wood, definitely improved. Step up in competition in Andre Philly. The third round was definitely to Andre Philly, though. He was landing the better shot. I might be getting these rounds mixed up, but there was a, a time when Andre Philly dropped Nathaniel Wood and then kneed him in the face, and Wood went for a takedown. Um, it was a very good fight, very back and forth. One minute of Wood's rocked, next minute Philly's rocked. Could have gone either way, but I'm not. I'm not like ashamed that Nathaniel Wood got the decision. I think he deserved the decision. Could have been fight of the night. Yeah, very impressive performance by both of these people. Nathaniel Wood should definitely deserve a ranked opponent. Now he's been asking for a ranked opponent for a while. He was supposed to fight Leroy Murphy. I don't even mind that fight between Nathaniel Wood and Leroy Murphy. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go Leroy Murphy, but Nathaniel Wood's still very solid. Andre Philly, again, shouldn't be ashamed of himself. This is a very close fight. But uh, 
Wood's game plan got the better of him. Then we move on to a big shock of the night. I predicted Molly McCann to beat Julia Stollerielink. I can't say her name. Molly McCann lost to Julia, whatever her name is. Julia Stor... I can't say her name. Stollerienko. Stollerienko, coming into this fight, had an MMA record of 10 wins and 8 losses. 10 wins and 8 losses. You know how bad that is? Molly McCann's coming off a loss to Erin Blankfield. I expected her to have learnt a bit more grappling and because she got like two... I thought this was going to be an easy fight. Um, Story Renko comes out, puts the pressure on Molly McCann. Molly McCann doesn't really know what to do, gets taken down and she gets an arm bar submitted. I'm not sure what's next for Molly McCann. Her hype's kind of died out. Most people were complaining that she was the co-main event before this fight. Now that she's just been submitted by someone with a record of 10 wins and 8 losses, it's kind of even more embarrassing. Um, fair play to Julia Molly McCann is she, she can only win when she's fighting strikers every grappler that she faces she gets battered by so uh, yeah I think everyone you know there's a, a lot of memes about this online Molly McCann probably doesn't deserve to be on a core main event spot again she needs to pick up at least three wins her hype's kind of died out this was supposed to be an easy fight for her after the Aaron Blankfield fight and it wasn't so Shameful, but it is what it is. Then we move on to the huge main event. Tom Aspinall versus Marcin Tabura. I got the prediction right. If you saw my video, I said that Aspinall's going to absolutely maul Marcin Tabura in the first round. And that's exactly what happened. I knew coming into this fight that Aspinall was different, man. He was a lot of different and he proved it. Marcin Tabura, he hasn't been finished for a while. He won seven out of his last eight. Very, very durable fighter. But Tom Aspinall was just better everywhere. He was faster. Tabura started swinging, couldn't land anything. There was a little exchange where they were in like a bit of a brawl. Aspinall landed the better shots. Marcin hit him like twice. But uh, Aspinall definitely got the better hit. A massive elbow. Then I think it was a, a right a right straight to the jaw that dropped and folded Marcin Tabura. And then Aspinall came up with ground and pound. Aspinall dominated this fight and it wasn't even close. And people are talking about Aspinall versus Jones. Jones has acknowledged Aspinall. I genuinely think like... I, with hand on heart, I think Tom Aspinall, without a doubt, will be heavyweight champion one day. I think 100%. I think he beats every heavyweight on the world right now. The only one I see him struggling with is John Jones, because it's John Jones. When it comes to Sergei Pavlovich, I think Sergei Pavlovich is just a little bit too one dimensional. But with that being said, Tom Aspinall does tend to leave his chin in the air a lot. So if Pavlovich hits him with one of those hooks that he does, I'm very scared for him on one of those straights yeah, Tom Aspinall, this was very impressive he has to, I think he's above Blades in the rankings now, he has to be above Blades, he deserves to fight Cyril Garn, he said he wants to fight the winner of Garn versus Spivak I don't really want to see him face Spivak again because we've already seen him fight Spivak and he finished him in the first round, so I'd love to see him against either Cyril Garn or Pavlovich and then John Jones, if John Jones is sticking around Marcin Tabura I mean, this was just a completely different Tom Aspinall, let's be honest. The Tom Aspinall that faced Alexander Volkov and the Tom Aspinall that faced Marcin Tabura are two completely different fighters. He is the future. He is the new breed of heavyweight MMA. He's very, he's so good. But yeah, I think this is very impressive. I got it right. Tom Aspinall, in my opinion, should go out there, fight, um, he should fight, what's his name? fight Cyril Garn, or I actually thought he should have fought the winner of Curtis Blades versus Jelton Almeida, I thought that would have been a good idea, but looks like he's got his eyes set on different people, maybe even a Pavlovich fight after Jones versus Stipe for the um, the belt but yeah, Aspinall, this is very impressive, Tabura he's like 30, what is he, like 36 37 now, maybe even 38 uh he, he could stick around if he wants to, I'm not sure why, he's never going to win the belt he I mean, maybe he could fight like, I don't know. I don't know who he could fight, but Aspinall came out there and mauled him in the first round. Wasn't even relatively close. Aspinall looks like a new breed, but yeah. That's my overall thoughts on this card. It was a good card. It wasn't a good card, to be fair. The prelims were quite dead. The main card was kind of made the card itself. I give it a 5 out of 10. It was 5 out of 10. Aspinall, really, you know, he saved the card, but yeah. That's my opinion on it.